What is up everybody, it is Mike Mind WBA here, back again with another episode of WWE Draft Wars. I can't believe it, we're still going. I'm here with Nathan again. What a shot. Hiya. He's still here, can't get rid of him. Oh. I'm joking. You're the one oh. that carries the series, that's why you're here. Oh, thank you. And today, we've got Monday Night Raw. Ooh, spicy. We oh. start off with a pre-show bout where the big show defeats Razor in a six-man tag where Razor was accompanied by his tag partner Mojo Rawley as well as Acom, he was there too and Big Show's partners were Apollo and Cedric Ooh, we've got some good performances there who was your standout performer there, Mike? Uh, got to be Acom It's got to be Big Lad Acom Let's move on to the main show uh, One worker improvement The big boy Razor I was wrong Big boy Rizal. I still don't know which one's which. I think that one's Acom and that one's Rizal. A Acom has a rounder head. Yeah. Rizal is like the m least likely, well, the one that you'd want to uh, meet in a bar the least out of the two. I don't know, I mean Mojo's there too. Yeah, but Mojo just has stickers and... Exactly. Stickers. We move on to our opening segment of the show where Finn Balor comes out, not out of the closet, but he says that he's sick of Dean Ambrose. He's attacking everyone. If Ambrose wants to fight, then fight him now. But Kirk comes out and says, hold on a minute. You've got a match tonight, Finn. You've got Rusev and Dolph in the main event for the Intercontinental title. And Dean, you've got a match in the hardcore tournament against Bobby Roode. So, instead of you fighting, how about Finn, you go backstage and Dean, you just have your match. And Finn comes out and he goes, no, nah, I'm sorry, Kurt. And the two of them fight. And then Finn gets told that if they don't separate, neither of them get a title match tonight. They'll both be severe repercussions. And then Dean Ambrose keeps attacking Finn anyways. And then Kurt gets the security out to break it up. And we have our opening match of the evening. Ooh, 83B plus. Decent. Yeah. Then I have a 72B minus, where in a false count anywhere match, Dean Ambrose defeats Bobby Roode in a 22 by pinfall with a dirty deed. Dean Ambrose got a 90. Dirty Dean and his dirty brawls. Just shows uh, how unrealistic this game is. Nah, Dean Ambrose in a brawl is class. Yeah, he's actually good in a brawl, I'll give you that. He's just shit everywhere else. Not really. He's, he's just very watered down. Very meh everywhere else. I like Dean Ambrose, I think he's very good. Some of us aren't very pedantic right now. As Dolph Ziggler is talking backstage to Renee Young, and out comes Rusev! And says that, what did you say, Dolph? You think you can beat me? No, no, no. That's not what happened last month, was it? You can't beat me on your own, and you can't beat me with Drew McIntyre's help. The only time you've ever won a match this year, or last year, was because of Drew. And Dolph's like, I don't need him. And Drew's like, really? I think you do. And Dolph's like, no, I don't. And that was a shit Scottish accent. And so Dolph gets goaded into fighting Rusev without Drew's help. And we'll see how that goes in the main event. 69C plus. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Aiden English continuing to be the uh, workhorse of the series. Oh, yeah. Up next, we have a 73B minus. As I said in the last episode, SmackDown's women's matches aren't as good as the Raw ones. As in a decent match, Alexa and Mickey defeat Ember and Natty and Ronda and Sashi in 9 minutes and 8 seconds when Alexa pins Natalia using the ropes for leverage. She cheated to beat Ronda's friend. Oh, and in two weeks, she's got Ronda at the Royal Rumble. Ooh, Yikes, friend. some very good and consistent performances there. Wrestling friend. Oh, friend. Any improvements? Uh, just the one. The, Rumble. the youngster and of the And speaking of the Royal Rumble, that'll be coming in just a couple weeks' time. Yeah. So, Alexa 69, impressive. Ronda 77, impressive. Fact, Ronda I, was not impressive because she was really off her game. They're all impressive, to be fair. Yeah. Do you think Mickey is... Like, how old is Mickey? She's like mid to late 30s, right? Yeah, about 36, why? Just thinking, like, do you think she's been wrestling longer than any of the other women have been alive? But I don't think you've got any that are that young. 
No. Who's the youngest woman on the main roster? I don't know. Anyways, while Mike determines that question's answer, Ronda Rousey saves Natalia from Alexa and Mickey's attack. So Natalia's down and Ronda has to save her because Natalia can't fight against Alexa and Mickey. There's two of them. And Ember starts fighting back, but she gets beat up because there's two of them. And in the end, it's Sasha and Ronda who make the save. Sasha did not do well without a script to follow. She kept just walking around in circles saying, I'm the boss. Alexa looked good because this mod's sexist. Sasha was very underwhelming, which just like a bookend to be honest. And Ronda came across well, so fair play. We clearly haven't seen her Twitter there. As we get a 73B minus and we push on to the next segment. And up next in another 73B minus in a steel cage match in the second semi-final of the hardcore tournament. Bray Wyatt defeats Luke Harper in a cage in 11.06 with the sister Abigail. So, next week, hardcore title, Bray Wyatt, Dean Ambrose, there can only be one hardcore champ. Well, there'll be more than one, but who do you think will win, Mike? Bray or Dean? I honestly couldn't give a shit. I don't know what I meant to say to that, to be honest. I'm trying my best, lads, but... Probably Dean. This is what I've got to work with. I think it's probably 76 good. there from Bray Wyatt inside the cage as we push on to the next segment. I believe Liv Morgan is the youngest woman on the uh, main roster. Thrilling! Yeah, glad I went through all that effort. Then Maria brings out Mike, but not the one in this video. It's Mike and Alice. The reunited. It must be love, love, love. Do, 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 do. But Maria argues with Bray because Mike just stands there aggressively in his nice little fabulous suit. And she argues with Bray saying that he's corrupted her husband. She's ruined him. She said she had to bring him to therapy and Bray's just on his knees laughing. Just like the therapy, vi I'm not going to make a joke, but the therapy video starts to play. And what happens in the video, Mike? Do you want to know what happens? What happens, Nathan? Well, Mike Canales is dragged into a room by Maria. He refuses to speak. She starts talking about them and eventually just shouts, Enough, woman! I'm sick of you. I'm sick of everyone saying that you can tell me what to do. Do you know who I am? I'm Mike Canales, damn it. I'm a star. A WWE superstar. And he starts storming about. He starts kicking off. Oh, he kicks everything. He kicks the chair. He kicks a poster. He even kicks the therapist right in the bollocks. He's scared of the therapist. Okay, he's just stealing Shinsuke's gimmick there. Not really. It's happened before. He's more like Shawn Michaels when he super kicks Stan. And he goes, what's his name, Maria? And she's like, I don't know. See, I just super kicked, I don't know. And he walks out the room going, rah, 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 rah. And the video plays, and the lights go out when it ends. And when they come back on, Mike Canales has disappeared. He's walked off. And even Bray Wyatt sat down now. He's not laughing anymore. He's like, the fuck was that? Man's a nut job. What have I done? What have I done? So, yeah, that's that segment, a 63C. What do you think of that, Mike? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. It's still interesting to see where this is going because nobody has a fucking clue. <laughs> I've got a clue for next week. Ooh. Then what happens next? We have a 71C plus in six man tag warfare, guys. As Buddy Murphy and the Revival defeat Mustafa Ali and the Usos in a rematch from two weeks ago. And this time it's Buddy Murphy getting the win for his team instead of losing as he pins Mustafa with the Murphy's Law. Good performances from the Usos and Mustafa. Everyone else is a bit mediocre or a little bit shit, which is really sad because they're all really good. Yeah. Mustafa in the same rating as Hideo Itami did on SmackDown. That'd be a good match, actually, Hideo versus Mustafa Ali. Yeah, what if Hideo was as good as he used to be? Did it happen on uh, 205? Do I sound like I watch 205 live every week? No, that's a good point. On <laughs> The last time I watched a full show yeah, other than on this year was about two and a half months ago, and that was because I was there live. 
Yeah, you didn't even watch the uh, Cruiserweight Classic. I didn't. No, I haven't watched the May Young Classics either. I, I don't that. watch WWE. But uh, I'm booking anyways, because why the fuck not? What we got next, Mike? We've got an angle. Oh, Jesus Christ. We've got an angle. It's a 63C, where the club are backstage, and they're totally cut down. They're like, we haven't been on Raw this year. We want an opportunity, man. We beat the Revival so many times. We're the club, man. And we beat them so many times, and we lose once, and all of a sudden we vanish. And in walks Goldust, and he's like, <sighs> and he blows everywhere. And he's just like a prostitute, really, just blows for everyone. And he stands there and he goes, I can help you guys with that. And they're like, what? And he starts prancing around the room going, ooh, I can help you guys. Goldust's got a plan. Goldust's got a plan. And then Kane walks in in an orange costume looking like an Asian man and boots the shit out the Precious. door and says, you want to fight, huh? Well, Goldust, do you want to fight? And Goldust's like, I love a good fight, Kane. <laughs> and Kurt just disturbedly walks out the room. And next week will be Goldust and Japanese man versus Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. Ooh, interesting. Very interesting. As Mike types away, clearly intrigued by the proposition of that matchup. Yeah, I am in full concentration mode. Lovely. Yeah. Interesting that uh, Goldust, straight back from injury, straight in Kurt's office. Yeah, he is. He wants an opportunity. He doesn't want to sit on the sidelines and get forgotten about. Yeah, he... he wants to be up there in your face in the action. Yeah, I mean, you don't last 20 years in this business without knowing how to get on the shows. Exactly. Up next, we have a solid match Ooh, where Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins defeats Big Daddy Shelton Benjamin in 803 with a curb stomp. Great chemistry for the boys. Seth gets a 96, and you can all suck me arse. Oh, Raw don't get 90 rated performances. Here, have a 96. I mean, it's not 90 rated. Then. It's 96 rated. Yeah. What happens next, Mike? Uh, I don't know, Nathan. It's your show. We then have an 88 B+, plus where Seth Rollins says, It seems that everybody wants to fight me. Brock Lesnar wants to fight me. Dean Ambrose wants to fight me. Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre, apparently they still want to fight me. And I've seen Twitter, even No Way Jose wants a piece of the man. So I'll fight anyone. So next week, I'm issuing an open challenge. No way, Jose, Dean Ambrose, Brock Lesnar, Shelton Benjamin's mama, whoever wants to fight the man, step out here next week and go one-on-one -on -one with Seth freaking Rollins. Idiot B+. Plus. Very good promo from Stephanie Rollins. Yeah. Yeah, yes indeed. Yes indeedly. The M's in the bank, like yes, indeed. Good announcing and colour commentary as well, which helped. And, Interesting. Uh, what's up next, Nathan? A match. As in a 73B minus, Andrade Cien Almas defeats Grand Metalik in 703 by pinfall with a hammerlock DDT. Mike's dyslexic and spelled that wrong. 73B minus, Almas did well, Grand Metalik did quite well as well. A great match there. Any improvements? Uh, yes. Almas in performance. Well, isn't that what you want, big boy? What happens next? I don't know. It's still your show. And what happens next is Dean Ambrose walks into Kurt Angle's office and he says, Seth Rollins is issuing an open challenge. I'm accepting it. I'm telling you now, that's my open challenge. And Kurt goes, well, actually, next week you've got Bray Wyatt in a hardcore match for the hardcore title. And Dean's like, I don't care. I'll fight them both. And Kurt's like, no, 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 I'm sick of it. Next week, you're fighting Bray Wyatt. If you answer that open challenge, you're fired. And Dean says, you know what? You're holding me back. Like I said last week, I'm sick of it. You hold me back. You won't let me fight Seth. I've got to fight a title. Okay, I'll fight whoever it takes. I'll fight every title and I'll win every title. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll beat Rusev or Finn or Dolph for the Intercontinental title. I'll beat Bray Wyatt for the fucking hardcore title. I'll beat 
Rusev or, or Brock or Seth Rollins for the Universal title, and I'll even beat Ronda Rousey for the women's title. Kurt Angle, I will do whatever it takes to fight Seth Rollins, and I will get an 86 B plus rating because I'm class. I'd like to see Dean try and take the title off Ronda Rousey. He could. Just to see her kick his fucking head off. No, he'd stab her. I mean, that, that's... Yeah, it's not a no-disqualification match. Wait, do you want to see think Ronda Rousey would beat Dean Ambrose in a fight? Yes. Yeah, would your mind. Nah, yes. she'd win. Nah, there's far too much of a weight difference. Nah, he's definitely whipped by uh, Renee, and I think Ronda would be able to take advantage of that. Dean would beat the shit out of her. Not, not a chance. Nah, there's too much of a weight difference. Every strike You're too much hit. of a weight difference, you fat prick. Yeah, got you. Next segment. Main event time. And then about that had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd and a very negative one from Mike as he hurts my feelings. Rusev defeats Dolph Ziggler and Finn Balor in 15-54. He beat Dolph with the matchka cake. Ooh, I could beat you, Rusev. Ooh, I don't need Drew McIntyre, Rusev. Bit awkward, isn't it? But Rusev makes defence number one of the WWE Intercontinental Hot Potato title. In a 76B- match, Rusev and Finn do very well. Dolph does okay. And yeah, a lack of psychology there. Story uh, of his career, isn't it? Dolph does story okay. Story of my life, I take her home. I try all night to keep her warm inside. It's frozen. So just let it go. Oh, God. As we end the show. Be alive. With a 79B. With a 79B, increasing the popularity in 25 regions and then another region on top of that. Yeah. I've always known as 26. Just oh, for those of you that can't so. do maps. And there's David Starr. Will we see him in WWE at some point in the future? Who knows? Comment down below. Probably not. Oh. I mean, Nathan's now going to tire him just to, like, annoy me, but... I, like I say annoy me. I like David Starr. He's ooh, a good lad. Oh, David Starr. Say, ooh, oh, David Starr. Do you know he's actually my favourite wrestler's favourite wrestler? Oh, that's yeah. nice. But anyway, that's enough for this episode. Make sure to tune in on the next episode for another Smackdown Live. Hey. <sighs>